المتقين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين له الفداء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعزم فرجه في مؤمنين مؤمنات brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته as we come close to the night of Qadr as we come close to the to tonight basically we remember also the events that took place in the early history of Islam and how we were all orphaned by the martyrdom of Amirul Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi we offer our condolences to Sahib al-Asr al-Zaman and all the Mu'mineen and Mu'minat and the lovers of Ahlul Bayt on this very sad occasion the concept that we discussed from the beginning of the month and we discussed various aspects of it is the concept of adl, justice and I spoke if you recall that we spoke of justice from the different perspectives one is in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the core and through that all the other relationships and all the other aspects of justice branch off so we speak of the justice with our own body limbs we speak, we speak of justice and doing the right thing and putting the right thing in, a, in the right place which is the meaning of adl and taj'ala wad'u shay' fi mawda to put things in the right place and to give Every, every person their right everything or every person or every concept their right and that branches off in many different areas one of the areas that is quite important and in fact it is part of the reason or to an extent it is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger and the imams and the books and so on is the justice establishment of, of justice amongst mankind themselves and some of the concepts that are often spoken of because you remember we discussed the relationship between justice and rights and the rights that we speak of in different areas if you give everyone their rights you have established justice if you take someone's right you have oppressed and you have uh, basically uh, acted unjustly it is against justice to take someone's right one of the most modern topics of justice in fact 
to the Western world is the concept of social justice and human rights. When we speak of human rights and social justice, often it is a concept brought against Islam and Muslims. And this is something I want us to pay attention to. As soon as they speak of Islam, they speak of a religion that does not respect human rights, or according to them, does not respect basic human rights. Equality amongst genders and equality amongst different classes of the society and so on. They bring that up and they say Islam against, is against it because Islam has slavery and Islam deems women in some areas below men. Islam gives half the inheritance that you give to a man to a woman. And therefore, it is, according to them, against human rights, against social justice. And they speak of these big concepts, forgetting where they learnt it from. Brothers and sisters, I want us to pay attention to where we came from and who we have as role models so that others don't proceed and become progress and become way ahead of us and advanced way more than us by following our role models and the teachings of our religion and our prophet and our imams they follow it and then they come and speak to us about those big words and big concepts when in actual fact, the first person who spoke of human rights is none but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala The first document in the human history about human rights is a document from Amirul Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Writing his letter, a documented letter from him to one of his governors and one of the heroes of Islam, Malik al-Ashrar, salamullah alayhi. Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi, this companion of Amir al muminin as he sent him to Egypt, he gave him this document, this letter, appointing him as the governor, and in there he spoke of concepts that until today, the Western world and the world all together has failed to establish his justice. They speak of it, but they fail to establish it. An, uh, an author, an, a Christian author, Lebanese Christian author, known as George Jordak, in the, ninth, in the 20th century, one of the very famous authors, in fact, writes a five-volume book on the personality of Imam Ali, alayhi salam. In there, he calls him the voice of human justice. Ali, Sawt al Adal al Insaniya. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I want you, brothers and sisters, I want us all to reflect on what we have and whether or not, this is, this is my question for myself and for all of us whether or not we have fulfilled the rights of Amirul Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. Otherwise we are zalimeen. Remember, if you do not give one, someone their right, you are a zalim. Have we fulfilled the rights? Have we been dutiful to Amirul Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamu alayhi? George Jordaq, in his early youth, when he was still young, he was given a copy of Nahj al-Balagha. I want you to read about it. He fell in love with this book. According to historians and according to people who know him very well and were close to him, they say from the very early time he started speaking statements of Nahj al-Balagha, those who knew him well. 
he would share with them words of wisdom. They ask him, where did you get that from? He says, this is from Nahj al-Balagha, words of Imam Ali alayhi salam. A Christian. And if you go, see, you might say Christian, Muslim, we're close. If you go to Lebanon and to some of the Middle Eastern countries, in fact, it's a little more polarized than here. Because they've lived together for a long time Everybody decided who they are. In America, people don't know. Many of the Christians that may be your neighbors don't even know Islam. Don't even know Nahj al balagha Don't even know the Quran. They may not have ever heard of it. But in an Arabic country, that the language that they speak and they learn at, at school and university is Arabic. They know Islam. They know Quran. They know the, they, they even know poetry about Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alaihi In some cases, it's part of their curriculum, and so they have decided who they want to be. For him to take that step and start speaking of the successor of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is a big step. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala. And then quoting Imam Ali all the time. This is a word from Imam Ali. This is a word from Imam Ali. Wor words of wisdom. Some say he memorized 70% or more of Nahj al -Balagha. Now I, I want to ask us all. How much of Nahj al -Balagha have we even read? And reflected upon? How much of it? Have we given the rights of Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa Ahlul Bayt sallallahu wa sallam alayhim came to us after Rasulullah sacrificed everything him and his progeny they sacrificed so much so that we established Deenul Haq the religion of truth how much of that truth have we learned then shared with people this is a man who read Nahj al balagha and fell in love with it then started speaking of it, quoting it. Eventually, he came and wrote his books on Amirul Mu'mineen and on the words of Amirul Mu'mineen, called him the voice of human justice, Sawtul Adal al Insaniya. He wrote it in volumes, and each of those volumes are very important for all of us to reflect upon. I, I encourage my brothers and sisters. Word, read Nahj al balagha and read those who wrote about Imam Ali and wrote about Nahj al balagha including this man. Read his work. Read some of his work and you'll find that we're speaking of a Christian that when he speaks of Amir al muminin he speaks of the human rights. He says he is the pioneer. In one of the volumes, in fact, his discussion is regarding human rights. So he says... That this Ali alayhi salam that he is writing about, he says that this man spoke of justice before it was even, or human rights before it was even a concept that anybody was familiar with. In one of his volumes, one of the volumes of his five volume books about Amirul Mu'mineen, he specifically spe spoke of human rights. And he says that this document of Amirul Mu'mineen came prior to any of the modern, in the modern world, the first document about human rights came in the 13th century. The first document ever known to, to the modern world. Then we come to the world of Ahlul Bayt, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhim. And we're speaking about seven or eight hundred years prior to that, seven or eight centuries prior to that, and such a document. Then he says, you know what's unique about Amir al-Mu'mineen, sallallahu alayhi wa He says, you know what's unique about Imam Ali, alayhi salam? He says what's unique is the fact that Imam Ali, alayhi salam, when he wrote this, he did not have a university and a board to write this document. In fact, it was what we call irtijal. He is simply writing off his head. Whatever comes to his mind, he is writing. 
And his statements, he says about his statements, he says many of his statements were irtijaliyah. He stands up and speaks. He gets told news from Anbar. He gets told that the enemy attacked some of the people of Muawiyah, la'natullah alayh, attacked a city in one of the remote areas in his uh, reign of uh, power at the time, Anbar. And they attacked the homes of Muslims and non-Muslims. And so he says, it came to my knowledge that they went in and attacked women, Muslim and non-Muslim. Al-Muslima wal-Mu'ahida. Al-Mu'ahida is non-Muslim that is living under Muslim uh, territory. He says, Muslim and non-Muslim. And they were snatching their gold from their hands and their, their ears and their, their anklets and so on. He says, if, it, if, uh, if I am told that a Muslim, knowing what has happened, dies in grief, it would be actually rightful for him. And if that does not happen, I would question their faith. Look at the words of Amir al Muslim and Muslim. This is somebody speaking again, a leader that came way before all of these talks of human rights and way before all of these documents that came at his time did not differentiate Muslim, non-Muslim, Zimmi or Mu'ahid, any of them living under. And this is what he told Malik al-Ashtar in that document when he says to him, Make your heart feel the love of the people. I'm sending you to those people. Make your heart feel the love for those people. Treat them with equality and with care and with love because they could not be a third of two. Either your brother in faith or your equal in humanity. These were the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen. George Jordaq, he says, he came up with that, without a group of, you know, the university uh, professors sitting around a table in the modern world trying to create a document. He did not have any of that. And you know what's also unique about that? They came up with so many concepts. Nowadays you have United Nations and you have human rights and you have all these different documents that have been pre presented. And a lot of them became part of some constitutions. But how much of it really got practiced? This is the question. Whereas Imam Ali salam, when he first became the Khalifa, the people came to him and said, now we've had enough with injustice, we want you to establish justice. They did not realize that they could not handle his justice. So he came, he said even if some money was usurped and through that money somebody went and got married or bought himself a, 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 Kenese, a female slave through that money that was not rightful for him, I will make sure that that money comes back to Bayt al-Mal one way or another. Even if it got basically used and consumed, I'll make sure it's brought back. He says, why? He says, because, this is very important. He says, because establishment of justice is the most important thing for any human that if it's not established, it is more difficult. This is an amazing statement. He says, if it's not established, if justice is not established, it is more difficult upon those who do not establish it themselves. I want us to reflect on this. He says, those who oppress, those who do not establish justice, they'll find it more difficult to deal with injustice than those who establish justice. Amazing. Because those who establish justice, according to the Holy Quran, they also establish Ihsan. And those who establish Ihsan, they also establish Afu. They establish goodness, which is above what's average. They also establish forgiveness. 
So they won't find it too difficult. But those who do not establish just, justice, they will find it more difficult to deal with injustice. So he's saying, even from a worldly perspective, from a materialistic perspective, establishment of justice is the most important thing on earth. These are the words of Amir al muminin and that is why this Christian author gets mesmerized by these words. He cannot help himself but praise him constantly, write about him, talk about him. Then others, they come and start writing poetry about him. What have we done about the justice of Imam Ali alayhi salam? This is my question. Others, they did. And they wrote. And they established. Another aspect that also he mentioned, and it's very important for us as followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen, we call ourselves the Shia of Ali alayhi salam. I say we call because we are far from being the Shia of Ali alayhi salam. And I'm including myself. In fact, I am the first to say I'm far from being Shia of Ali alayhi salam. But we're trying to follow Imam Ali alayhi salam. We love Imam Ali alayhi salam. What are we doing with these concepts that he established several centuries ago? Introduced to humanity what they are alien to until today. What are we doing with it? He says when those people, when United Nations today, they write documents about human rights and they speak of equality amongst humanity, in practice they do nothing about it or very little in some cases. And in many cases they are very well okay. In this modern world, they come and speak to you about democracy, equality, and so many beautiful concepts. It comes to practice. What do they do about it? Why is it that a life in Burma is worthless? Hundreds of children die in Burma. They're worthless. Hundreds of children in Yemen today are dying in starvation. And they're worthless not even worthy of mentioning in the media. I want us as Muslims to wake up to the reality that we're living in, to the bystanders that we're living in, and not to be okay with it. Don't be baffled by some of the big statements that they throw at you. It's beautiful to speak of human rights and equality. It's beautiful to speak against oppression but it's beautiful to maintain that regardless of race gender color religion regardless of any group of faith or any borders to speak and to maintain that out of a sudden the people who are oppressing and killing become our best friends. The people who are causing a famine become our best friends. This is a problem. But again, I come back to myself. We're approaching the nights of Qadr. And it's, it should be all about purifying ourselves. Where are we from the justice of Ali alayhi salam? We realize the world is filled with injustice. They speak of it, but it's filled with injustice. They speak of it, yet the life, according to them, the life of an American dog or an Australian cow, and I witnessed this incident, is more worthy of the life of Indian or other nations, children, humans, worthy of mentioning in the media, worth, worthy of chasing and prosecution of anyone who is usurping those rights. I'm not saying there's any th anything wrong with having those animal rights and chasing, prosecuting anyone who is a criminal in that area. 
but let's maintain some sort of equality. Let's maintain some so sort of humanity. Again, this is about the world around us. What about us? This is why we need to be reminded of the ayah. The world is filled with injustice. And it will be until the Imam Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif comes and establishes the justice of his grandfather, Amir al Mu'minin Salawatullah Wasalamu Alayhi. Establishes the justice of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt Salawatullah Wasalamu Alayhim. Until then, it will be filled. But what am I doing about that? Am I contributing, God forbid, to injustice? Or am I educating people about the justice of Ahlul Bayt? First, am I educating myself? I, again and again I say it. This Christian author reads Nahjul Balagha. He memorizes several sermons, 70% of it. Where, where, what did I do about Nahjul Balagha? He writes about Amirul Mu'mineen. What did I do to, to let the world know who Ahlul Bayt and who Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam is? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala What am I doing about that? That is, a, that is something I need to ask myself. What am I doing to inform the world of this great personality being Amir al Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa It is very unfortunate when you speak of Ali in the Western, in, especially in America, or put the name Muhammad and Ali together, they know the fighter, yeah, the, the, the boxer. This is the most famous according to them. Maybe he was a great person. And he spoke some great words. In fact, he did. But where is he from Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi afdal salawat wa tahiyyat? Have I introduced Amir al Mu'mineen? Or is it by chance that these people learn about Amir al Mu'mineen? In one of the gatherings of the youth when I was in Vancouver, an idea came up and I, I encouraged the youth and perhaps we could do that here. That write some of the words of, type up some of the words of Amirul Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamu alayhim and Ahlul Bayt and type, type it up, make it into a nice flyer and share it with people. In the bottom of it, some words about, say, about uh, how you treat your parents how you treat your children, how you treat your neighbors. Let that be the title. Speak the words of Ahlul Bayt. Law alim nas Ahlul Bayt, they tell us, Mahasinu kalamina lattaba'una. If people knew the beauty of our words, they would follow us. Are we doing that? Are we sharing with people some of the words of Ahlul Bayt? Perhaps in the end, write Imam Ali. Peace be upon him. In the end of it, let them search themselves, go and search, who is this Imam Ali? These words are not very common. They're very unique. Who is he? Are we doing that? Are we sharing some of the words of Imam Zain al-Abideen, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi, in dua makarim al-akhlaq? It's recommended during the nights of Qadr, inshallah, on the 23rd. You recite this dua, or any nights of Qadr, you recite this dua. Are we doing that? Or have we become oppressive to Ahlul Bayt salawatullah wa salamu alayhim? This is a question I want to leave you with. Although we are commemorating tomorrow night and the next three nights, but it's not far from there and it's almost sunset. Inshallah, we'll remember and commemorate from tonight the calamity of Amirul Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. I perhaps... If, we could, if I could ask that you turn off the lights so that we can travel with our hearts and not with our vision, with the, with the basira and not with the basar, inshallah, to Medina and to Kufa, in fact, tonight, where Amirul Mu'mineen, salawatullah wa salamu alayhim, alayh, was having his iftar in the house of his daughter. And this is Amirul Mu'mineen, that when he wants to have his iftar, and he is invited as a guest. And I want us to reflect, what are we doing in terms of that ourselves in our homes? He wants to have his iftar. He is a guest. 
His daughter puts more than one item of food on the table. He says, my daughter, do you want me to be questioned on the day of judgment? When did you know your father to have more than one item of food on the table, to eat more than one type of food? So either keep the milk or keep the bread. This is Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullahu salamu alayhi. He's having his food, and then he spends the night in worship. Then he has his vision of the night, and then he comes to leave the house. And everything is trying to stop him. Narrators, historians, they say even the doorknob is trying to stop Amir al-Mu'mineen. His izar gets his belt, gets stuck on the door. And then he tightens it and he says, Ushdud hayazimaka lil maut fa inna al maut atika. Tighten your belts, get ready for death because death is coming to you. This is Ali alayhi salam saying to himself, get ready for death. What are we doing in getting ready for our death? Ushdud hayazi makal al maut fa inna al maut atika his daughter hears his words. She sees his situation is different. It is narrated it was Umm Kulthum. He was at her house. She says, Aba ya Amir al Mu'mineen. I see you speaking differently of death. I see you talking differently about the end. He says to her, my daughter, we all need to be ready for death. And you need to be ready for the departure. Then he leaves, according to some narrations. She then set, sent after her brothers, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain. You need to be in the Masjid of Raz Amir al Mu'mineen, in the Masjid of Kufa. Our father is acting differently tonight. It seems it's a different night. Adham Allah lak al Ya Sahib al Zaman, Amir al Mu'mineen arrives at Masjid al Kufa. He sees the Lain, Ashq al Akhirin, Yetbao Ashq al Awalin. He sees Ibn Muljam laying on the ground. He says, do not lay on your stomach. This is the sleeping of shayateen. Even with the enemy, even in that situation, knowing what he is preparing for, he still advises him. Then he says to him, whatever you're planning, it is something that is pleasing the shayateen, yet the angels in the heavens and the earth are angered by that. Amir al Mu'mineen goes and gives the adhan with his voice on that day. Allahu Akbar is raised in the Masjid of Kufa. He comes down, then he is praying the nafilah, the la'in comes. He approaches the imam, while the imam is in the sujood, getting up from his sujood, he struck the imam on the tahaddamat wallah. These were the words of the angel saying that the pillars of Iman today are being struck. لا 
حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم إلهي بمحمد وعلي وفاطمة والحسن والحسين وبالتسعة المعصومين من ذرية ذرية الحسين استجب دعواتنا يا الله اللهم ارزقنا توفيق الطاعة وبعد المعصية وصدق النية وعرفان الحرمة وأكرمنا بالهدى والاستقامة واملأ قلوبنا بالعلم والمعرفة وطهر بطوننا من الحرام والشبهة اللهم اجعل عواقب أمورنا خيرا اللهم شاف مرضانا ارحم موتانا بحرمة السورة المباركة الفاتحة تحفها صلوات اللهم آمين